there was there was a roofing crew in town that did that exact thing. Ooh. They took the roof off an entire house. They showed up after the homeowner left for work. They peeled the entire roof off the house. Oh. The homeowner gets home late that evening. What the heck is going on? <laughs> they don't have a roof anymore. <laughs> so they reported this to the police because like somebody took my roof. Oh, because the crew's gone. So the crew's gone. Oh, what the heck. So they called the police. <laughs> So some of the people on this particular roofing crew had once and warrants. So they got rolled up mm. and all that, all because they showed up at the wrong house. What is up, guys? Joe Evers, the fence expert. We actually just wrapped up Blake with Fence Guys telling us his fence story. Uh, Blake, we talked about we talked a lot about software, implementing it in the business, uh, how it's helping you to grow the business and that sort of thing. I think it's a great interview. I think if you guys are interested in hearing about a young startup story that's uh, from the ground up, really, uh, implementing software to grow the company, I think you're going to really enjoy this interview. Blake from The Fence Guys, and here's the story. So I graduated college in 2018. Okay. And um, I remodeled two houses Okay. with my grandmother as the investor. Yeah. Um, I did all the work and seven stuff out, some things out, sure. you know, flooring, whatever. Um, so that netted me a little bit of money. So I had, a, a, but I couldn't find any other houses. I tried to find, try to find, you know, everybody was in. The main mm -hmm. reason why was because she, um, my grandma was very tight. Okay. And okay. So she thought she could still get a, you know, a house for 50, 60, $70,000 and remodel it and, and double their money. Sure. And sure. I'm trying to tell her, you're not, we're not going to find one. We're <laughs> not going to find one. We have to, you know, we got to pay. If you want to play, you got to pay. Step up to the plate. And, you know, I could tell she was not gonna gonna play. So sure. I, I talk, I talk a lot. So, I mean, I was just talking to anybody, everybody trying to find something to do. Sure. Um, and at the time, after that, I went out, I reached out to a guy, family friend uh, that was doing developing. Okay. Not building, developing. Yep. Um, so putting all the roads putting and Putting roads inside. So I worked for him for about six months and um, in the meantime, you know, hanging out with friends, talking, just trying to get something rolling. Yeah. I had a buddy that was working um, for another fence contract in our area. Um, and for whatever reason, he, he, he ended up quitting and went went work for the city. Okay. Um, that's near where our shop is now. Um, he had just get, had a wedding. Okay. And had charged a little bit of money to a credit card. And needed to pay us pay his credit card off. I said, "Listen, I, I truly think we could, you know, do this. You know, I believe in you. I believe in myself. I think we could really get busy, and and do something with this." And he's like, "Well, I need to pay this credit card off. So let's see what we can do." And, yeah. And we just started there, man. Uh, every day he stayed working for the city because he's got a wife and mm -hmm. bills. And at the time, I was leaving my parents, you know, sure. trying to save money. Um, so. We, um, every day he got off at three thirty, and we worked till dark. Yeah. Past dark. Headlamps. Headlights. Yeah. Headlamps. And, um, yes, yeah, so we started February 18th by, uh, June, mid June. Um, he said, I can't do this anymore. It's just too much. Yeah. And so, you know, and that was, we, we formed the business before, you know, COVID went mainstream. Sure. All right, it was already our idea before COVID was mainstream. And then, COVID went mainstream and it's like, you know, we can't stop now. Sure. So, um, you know, he had to make the choice of either risk it for the biscuit and quit working for the city and roll or shut down right now. Yeah. So he decided to, uh, to, to quit and come on and stay partners with me. If not, it's just gonna be me. Yeah. So it's still, we're still together. Nice. And, um, yeah, two and a half years later, we're, we're here we are. I Pretty mean, good. So we, I don't, go, we don't feel like we have much. A lot of people tell us we have a lot. Yeah. But or that we're doing a lot, and that you know we have a shop, we have inventory, we mm -hmm. you know we have stock, we have you know different things. But so I think it doesn't feel that way. Well, and and that's funny because I think I don't think you ever lose that. You know what I mean? That never feels that way. Yeah. Because you know I'm kind of in a similar boat to where we've got a nice facility and we've we keep a decent amount of inventory. But for me, I'm like, well, this is just. Like the office was built in the fifties and we don't have nearly enough yard space. So exactly. I don't know that you ever lose that because exactly. you always, you know what you're capable of. Or at least you don't want to lose that. You right. Know, get too big right. of a head is 
the fear. You sure. Know? Sure. You're not better than the next guy. No. By any means. Well, and that's the thing is we had a similar conversation the other day about people that, uh, so you look at someone and you're like, man, they got it figured out, mm-hmm. right? They've got the business plan. They've got this and that and the other. And then you talk to them and they're like, I don't have anything figured out. Yeah. You know, like yeah. I've still got to do this. I got to do this. This isn't right. And you're like, man, what are you talking about? Yeah. I think that's more common than people realize is that, you know, the guy you think, that has things figured out. Really does. He he, he does. He's, he's, still he's held together by bubble gum and duct tape. He's sort still of learning too. We're all still learning. That's what I really like about this industry is yeah. everybody's so open. I mean, I called you what beginning of the week and said, "Hey, yeah, I heard you got it figured out." You know, <laughs> and then you tell me, and I don't. It's <laughs> like, oh boy, two, do two, I not? 2.0's coming. You know, for, yeah. the, for the dip tank. So we're all just trying to learn. You know. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, this so this is a good example to where you're like, I'm trying to figure it out, and I said, Hey, actually. We're having a contract appreciation Friday. Come on up, get some lunch. I'll take you out to stain shop, introduce you to the guys that do the staining. Yep. I mean, I can tell you about it, but they can tell you about it better. Yep. Um, I mean, that's just kind of how our industry as a whole, most of it is, is we're getting to where everyone's kind of an open book. Yeah, to where, if we want to grow. Well, yeah, you, and you and I know a handful of other guys to where if you called them today and you said, hey, I'm going to be up around you next week. Could I stop by? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Doors would be open. You know, The whole place would be open to you. Uh, Vince Prince calls us while we're in the uh, yeah while we're out in the lot. We talk all the time, you yeah. know. Uh, Dylan Blanc, if anybody knows him, he's yeah. he's always there, especially you know on the on the operations side with like job Nimbus or anything like that. Yep. If I have any question, like he's right there. To, like he usually knows how to do it already, mm-hmm. and he can answer it quick. It's like why spend you know an hour or two or three you know trying to call or get a hold of somebody or figuring it out yourself <laughs> yeah. when you've got somebody that probably already has it figured out. Right, you right. Know? They've put in the legwork to figure it out. Yeah. That's that's something that we're kind of realizing a lot of times with this software. The software isn't really developed for the fence industry, right? No, no, Regardless no. of what software we're talking yeah, about. Yeah. It was developed for this industry or that industry, and then it was kind of made to work for Most, the fence industry. Mostly roofing. <laughs> right. It is a <laughs> lot of roofing. All of them are made for roofing. It's a lot of there. roofing software. Yeah. But so if you called the company... They would say, well, here's how I think it would work, and maybe you it's could make how, it work this way. This is how we way. make it work. Right. This is how we do it. Or you, know? you could talk to somebody. Like I said, so, so Dylan and Dan both have figured a lot of that out with the software. So yeah. and there are open books to where they can help you figure it out. And mm-hmm. they, they can say, this is how it works for our company. Right. Right. Rather than the company that says, this is how I think it would work for your company. Yep. And, and again, yeah, so... We're getting to that point in our industry to where you have a lot of guys that are like that, that yep. would pick up the phone when called and say, listen, I don't know if this is right or wrong, but this is how it works for us. Right. You know, and that's... And you don't have to use it. You know, you don't have to do it that way. Right. Just, and, and maybe you'll need to tweak it to make it work for you. Right, right. But I might have gotten, you know, 80% of the legwork done in the meantime. Yeah, yeah. I've hit this pothole and that pothole and this slowdown. Don't do these things. Yeah. Here's how I got past that ultimately. And I really think we're trying to help each other leapfrog forward. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Skip the skip ahead. Don't pass go the whole thing. Yeah. I mean, what I stay, what I try to do with everything is oversimplify everything. Yeah. Whatever you do, sense. how can we simplify this process for everybody? Well, yeah. You keep know. it simple. Yeah. You know, there's At the end of the day. A lot of times, yeah, when you, when you try to complicate it, to make it exactly right, you end up missing the point completely. Yeah, yeah. And it leads to frustration and oh, all that. Yeah. You can go off a rabbit hole on some things for <laughs> sure. Well, and it can make perfect sense to you. Mm-hmm. But then when you go to explain it to somebody else, you've made assumptions based on things that you know. Or th- yeah, think you know. Or yeah. think you know. Yeah. That, that this other person hasn't experienced or doesn't know. So right, right, right. Keeping it simple is ultimately the plan. Right. Just, just because less frustration, which leads to higher adoption rate, mm-hmm. right? I mean, they're more likely to do it if it makes sense. Yeah. Personal opinion, if anybody is like at my stage and smaller or whatever, yeah. you know, uh, listening to Dan and Dylan and I mean, probably what you're doing too, you know, on Job Nimbus and I think Mark Olson's getting on yep. it and yeah. um, I don't know who else is on it, but it, you know, Running everybody through my salesman, Matt Warner. Yep. Oh my goodness, total it's, game changer. Absolutely. Ran and, and with that word Nimbus gets used a lot, or phrase game changer, but it really legitimately is. It's changed the game 
for us. Agreed. I will say that. Agreed. I mean, you're going out to pointless calls, pointless calls after pointless calls, you know. It saves That's you right. a lot of time and the customer time. Well, and a lot of times the customer doesn't know what the budget should be. Right. They're right. guessing. Yeah. And maybe they went online and read an article that or said it should it. cost. Right. Right. And, and which isn't really based on your market. Right. It's based on some, some other market or an average of markets. Right. So they don't know. They yeah. might think this fence is supposed to cost $5,000. And you go out and you measure it, and you know in your head, you know when you pull up and you see the size of the yard, no. there's no way. Yeah. Like, this, this is at 10000 at least, and that's if it's bare bones and if it's not the whole thing. I like how you say that. Now, you know, most we, we call them tire kickers, but sure. they might not be tire kickers. They just don't know. That's right. They don't know. Well, it, it, exactly. I don't know that anyone, and there might be people like this out there, that just enjoy having a bunch of people out to, to measure stuff price. and to do this. Because you got to think, it's also taking time out of their day, mm -hmm. right? Like, no one enjoys having to do that. So, I don't know that they do that intentionally, the, right. the tire kicking thing. Now, maybe there are. Maybe there are people that just enjoy, you know, putting people through the ringer. But I think legitimately, they just don't know. And I think the reason that they have multiple bids is because they don't know. Yeah. And they don't want to be taken advantage of. And they don't, they want to get the best price for what their project is. Where software out there the my salesman's help skip that step it lets the customer know this is the budget and it gives them a bit of grace of not being put in the position of you know having to tell you that they can't afford it right right that right. it's just outside of their budget or just trying to get the best price and call on everybody it's like hey right this is what it's roughly going to cost you you know we had a guy it's so worth a hundred or whatever it is you know oh. a month i mean that's the thing. So I tell Matt and Rachel this often. I was like, now listen, don't change my price. But yes. I think you should be charging more for it. <laughs> like I'm good at my level, but uh, the value is tremendously past oh, yeah. whatever they're charging for it now. Oh, my goodness. I mean, it's the value's there. And, and now Matt and Rachel and I are friends, but I'm not saying that because we are, right? We became friends through our use of the software. I had no idea who they were. I hadn't heard of yeah, any same. of it before... I found, I think I found him at a fence tech. Actually, we were at fence tech, and I was like, "What soft?" Now this was, Before, I don't know, four or yeah. five years ago. Yeah, yeah. It might be longer now, but when software in the fencing industry was just absolutely or like unheard of. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I was like, "Wait a minute! People are bringing technology into fencing. Mm. Interesting. I let's check it out." Yeah. And then the price point was so low. I was like, <laughs> "Okay, like we we can give it a shot." And it's all like. They're so confident. It's month to month, and there's no contract. So I was like, "All right." So I give it a try for a couple months. If I don't like it, I can turn it off. Exactly. And then I get into you it, love that. and I was like, "Uh huh." Mm -hmm. Now I understand. Yep. This is a time saver. So we're buying back our time and our and our salespeople's time, that sort of thing. Yeah. And it's also like say, giving the customer. Now we've given the customer an idea what the budget's going to cost. Now rarely, but it has happened where a customer thinks it's going to cost more. Right, so they go, you know what? I was on the tool, your online quote tool, and I thought I wanted just a, a pine privacy and this and that, but I realized I'd actually like a bid on cedar because it's not that much more. Yeah. Absolutely. Come on. So it allows them to kind of choose where their project falls in the budget. Right. Right. And saves us time. And then 2020 rolls around, pandemic shows up. You really needed my sales. We had to have it. Yeah. I mean, because... In every every market's different, but our market, we were essential, but they still, so we were allowed to keep operating, but they severely limited how we could interact with people, right? It couldn't right. be face-to-face. -face, it couldn't be closer than eight feet. It could be yeah. on and on and on. Yep. And, you know, gas stations were limited in what they were offering and this and that. So the idea of putting a sales force out into the field came Tr became tremendously harder overnight right. you know, as all these mandates started rolling out. We'd use this before as an option, mm -hmm. right? We'd say, hey, have you checked out the tool? No, no problem. Let's schedule time to come out. But if they wanted to, it was there. Right. Uh, overnight, we had to switch to this is our standard process right. now. Right. Because, and out of fear for ourselves and our team too. I mean, because... Mm -hmm. You'll have to remember this was early enough in it that no one knew what was going what on. What the heck was going on? Now you're and you were hearing some pretty scary stuff. Mm -hmm. So we were also kind of scared about what are we putting our team members in contact with? Yep. With this person who has also met with several other people 
those other people who have they had contact with, yeah. it gets kind of crazy. Yep. So this became a really nice way of pre-qualifying and kind of taking the first portion of the sales process off the plate of the salespeople, yep. right? Mm-hmm. And kept everyone safe. And what we found too is we could get a lot more sales proposals out into the market that way too. Oh. I mean, By far. in person, what do you think? Five or six a day, something like that. Yeah, um, our our guy does five a day. So yeah. he, he goes from actually we we schedule eight a.m. Okay, and yep. then everyone after the eight a.m. is you just have to be home. Kind of like, yeah, you know. Yeah. So they're not going like this. Sure, you know. So uh, yeah. four to five, no more than five, yeah. uh, comes back, and then he's done by like two. Uh, does the drawings, submits mm-hmm. them, and then this uh, Skyler yeah. uh, puts the uh, estimate together. Nice. So yeah, we I think we got my salesman like beginning of 2021. Okay. Maybe end of 2020. Sure. We set it all up, updated pricing, you know, every Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, but at that time, we didn't have very many hands on deck. And yeah. so we ran it to where you didn't have to give us your information until the end. Uh, yep. Uh, I like that a lot. Um, so, because we didn't have the time to, you know, be calling these people back. Like, if they didn't really want to talk to us, yeah, we didn't want your information. If you really didn't want to talk, if you didn't like the number, don't give us your information. Absolutely. We don't have the time. We still do it that way, really? where we have the information at the end. Yeah. So we switched it back okay. to where you give us your information first. In the beginning, yeah. Everybody gives their information. They all go into Job Nimbus, and then once it's complete, then you either give us a call or uh, shoot us an email. Mm-hmm. And at that point, we can move forward to get somebody out to get final measurements. Gotcha. So we're still not reaching back out if you don't reach out to us. Okay, okay. Someday we might do that, but like... Well, so that was, so that's an interesting way of doing that because... Because we the want reason, the automated emails to follow up. Yeah. You know, within Job Nimbus. Nice. The way, the problem we found with having it in the beginning was people didn't realize they were asking to be reached out to. So they would go all the way through the proposal and they would say submit... They'd hit submit, and the next thing you know, they'd get a screen that says, all right, we'll have someone reach out to you tomorrow, or whatever the wording says. Uh, and then when we'd reach out, they would say, oh, well, we were just wanting a price. We didn't really want to schedule anything. We were just wondering what it cost. Yeah, they see. didn't understand that that next step was us reaching out. So it's interesting that you kind of built in that safety feature yeah. of, if you like it, reach out to us, and then we can go from there. Yep. Just yep. all for that problem. But we, we still put it in Job Nimbus so that they're getting yeah. those automated emails for, what, 90 days or 60-some sure. days. You know? that, so follow-up is massive. There's yeah. a lot of money that gets left on the table by yeah. not following yeah. up. I think yeah. that's an interesting conversation to have, too, where a lot of these softwares, like like you had said, a lot of us use Job Nimbus, uh, have built-in automations. Mm-hmm. Now, you, you have to build it and tweak it to you, and so it sounds like your voice. Uh, but I think, like I said, there's a tremendous amount of opportunity that gets left out there just because there is no follow-up. Yeah. So my brother was putting together the um, Job Nimbus side of uh, our new staining division. Yeah. And he's like, dude, you have a lot of uh, spelling areas, errors in here. I'm like, that's on purpose. You know, <laughs> I got that from Dan and Dylan. Uh-huh. And they're like, you know, make it personable. You know? Yeah. Are you gonna make mistakes? Yeah. So, sure. So make it personable. Yep. Um, yeah, we, we really like it a lot. It, yeah. works, it works for us. So you said so you said your follow up process is roughly ninety days. I, I mean, give or I, take. I think it's at sixty. I'd okay. like to go a few more. You sure. know, uh, and Dylan also told me you know follow up is like huge for them, just like you said. Mm-hmm. I'm like, but man, I you know this was before we were on Job Nimbus, and yeah. I was like, dude, oh, we yeah. don't have the time to follow up with people. <laughs> yeah, but like one of our salesmen the other day was like, hey, did you land? Did we land this job? I'm like, well, let me check, and I pulled it up, and like. They had responded to one of our automated emails and says, we're still going through the process with the HOA, huge, you know, subdivision fence. Uh-huh. Um, we'll, we'll let you know when that's completed. It's like, dude, perfect. Like, yeah. We, we didn't have to do nothing. It shot of a, you know, quick email. Well, I know you're and, still thinking about it. They're still thinking about us. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, you know, we're still there. I like that a lot. And so, like you said, that's automated to send out occasionally so that it frees up your time. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's... That was one of the things that made a big deal for us because we used to use a, a different software where it would remind you to send the emails, yeah. but you still had to sit down. So I would have the first hour and a half of the day sitting down, typing out emails, sending them off, and it took up, like I said, hour and a half, two hours of every day, Monday through Friday, typing up all these emails. And when I saw that uh, as one of the benefits here, like, sign me up. Yeah. Like, if I could save 
two hours a day mm -hmm. at whatever I think my time is worth, now all of a sudden it's paid for the software. Yep, yep. And we're in the process of adding um, Simply. Um, yep. I have, you have Simply? No, we don't, but I've heard uh, Dan talk about it a lot. Yeah, so I, I think the one um, benefit that I see with Simply is the automated text. Yeah. Because especially with my generation, you know, I never read emails until, sure. we, until we got on uh, Job Nimbus. <laughs> yeah. Never was an email guy. It's like, I'll just shoot them a, you know, professional, you know, we had an app. We do the estimate on a piece of paper, mm -hmm. real professional. We, we, there's an app. You take a screen, uh, nice uh, scan uh, picture shot. Yep. And so it looks like you scanned it, but it's really not a scan. And so we send it over and, you know, we just text with them. Yeah. It's like, why do I need an email? But now it's like we email everything. Everything's uh -huh. through email. Everything's documented. And like how often are these people really checking their emails? You know, we go through and, you know, they might open the first one, but then they'll miss yeah. the next four or five. Well, or, yeah, or maybe they or don't. get sent to spam because Bingo. they're getting so many. Yeah. So it's like we need to send a text, you know, especially for reviews. Yep. We need those reviews. Like yeah. How many more could we get? Yeah, how many requests are sitting in spam or junk yes, or whatever? Yes. Because so, as of right huge. now, there's no spam filter on the text. Yeah. Now, give I, it a little gonna, while. It's going to be coming. Give it a little it's while. It's going to come. It's, so there's a quote I was listening to a podcast, and they were basically like, listen, advertisers ruin everything. So They're, get in. And they were talking about specifically about texting. Said, so get in now it's before, the future. before they figure yeah. out how to, how to start blocking stuff. Yep, yep. But um, that's interesting. So you use simply to do automated text. This is part of a conversation I was having the other day just about the fact that we need to modernize our companies to get ready for the next wave of homeowners, right? If Because we do residential and all that. And I think that's to the point where you said your generation doesn't look at emails. They prefer text. Mm -hmm. So this all kind of falls in line with that conversation of we need to start today getting ready for the generation that just has nothing to do with emails. Yeah, yeah. I know, you know... They definitely probably check their work email, but are they sure. checking? I don't check my personal email hardly at all. Yeah, you know, but I'm checking, you know, all like like three different you know business emails between you know standing fencing and then the main uh, you know fence email that our assistant owns, but yeah, but we or runs, but sure, you know, it's there's about three four different emails that I check. Besides, I don't really check my you know personal email. Well, you know what much. I'm I'm sitting here thinking I've I've got I bet unread emails probably 60 or 70 of them. They're sitting yeah, like they're yeah. important. I'm going to get yeah. the reason they're still there is I haven't deleted them. Yeah. But I don't have any unread text right now. No. No. When I mean, it, you catch up at the end of the day. Yeah, when it goes yeah. off, that gets my attention. When I hear the email ding like yeah, I get I get to it later. Right. When I sit down at the you know computer. So, so I wonder if by switching to text, if you have a, a higher success rate because you don't get put off. You know what I mean? Like they don't think, well, I'll get to that. This Some of these unread emails have been there for a while in my email server. You oh, know, yeah. Where are people at? What are people doing? Right. They're on their phones. Yeah. And a lot, I, I like talking. Yeah. So like Dylan FaceTimed me. Uh -huh. I'm a huge FaceTime guy. Of course. Because I like. It's the like, expression. Why, yeah. Yeah. Like. Answer my FaceTime call. Like, <laughs> if we're going to talk, let's talk on FaceTime. Let's, I want to see your face, you know? I agree. Um, so, I agree. But a lot of people don't like talking, you know? I mean, it's like they're scared of, I don't know. So they love text. Of course. So that's where everybody's at. Well, and it know? seems more personal than email also. Yeah. So not as personal as a video call, but not so impersonal as an email. It's kind of that nice common ground, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think you've got an advantage by only have starting in the last several years because you're coming into this is your ground floor with all the technology with all the integrations do you think you're at an advantage there over someone that maybe has done this for a while and is trying to reorganize her company to bring technology into it i don't know i think i, I, I think you are i think i'm open to change a lot um we we hired a a shop guy really nice guy really good and and when I chose to go with him, I said, listen, you will not work out here if you do not like change. Sure. Because we changed up a lot. Yeah. You know, because, I mean, I figured out with the fencing industry, nothing's cut and dry. Everybody's the same. This is how you do it. Like, a, you know, a super center or a retailer. Or something. Sure. Like, everything is different, you know. And, like, what works today might not work tomorrow. What I think works or is going to be great 
in a week we're going to figure out is horrible, sure. and, uh, the worst decision ever, and we're going to switch. You know, so we got to make decisions and move. Um, I think since I'm young, I am open to or know how to work computers and uh-huh. systems and know the benefits of automation or I'm open to automation sure. versus I think a lot of, you know, older uh, generations aren't open to automations. I think you're right. Well, and since you're new, you didn't, you don't have these entrenched processes, right? Yeah. Or these entrenched systems yeah. to where, hey, this is how it's always been done, right? Yeah. This is how we've done it the last 20 years. Yeah. It works. We're not messing with it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You get the you have the benefit of not having you're not having that experience to where mm-hmm. you say, all right, so we're going to incorporate simply we're going to incorporate job nemesis and my salesman this because that's the way it works. Yeah. Instead of, well, we're going to have to change this process. We're going to have to spend a lot of time tweaking this and retraining. Mm-hmm. You have the benefit of just hitting the ground running. Right. Right. With that. Yeah. I, I really I really think you do have a benefit in that of not having to go through the whole retraining and, and reorganizing systems and that sort of and thing. And people, yeah. Right, yeah. right. That's real is, is retraining people and getting them comfortable in a new way. Because a lot of times what you're asking them to do is move away from something they know works. Yeah, yeah. And it works well for them. Yeah. They've figured it out. They've optimized it as much as they can. And you're asking them to move away from that into something they don't know. Yeah. And that's that can be scary. Yeah, I mean, that's like if you switch to simply simply, yeah. Telling your whoever answers your phone, it's not a phone. Right. It's right. all on the computer. Right. You know, it, you connect your he- headset to the computer and it's all a built in uh, you know, extension. Yeah. So it's it's, it's different. You gotta be open to you know, learning new things and different ways and processes. Well, and you know what's funny is like technology has a way of like giving people half steps into that. Oh yeah. Like, so our, our phone system here is completely VoIP, voice over IP. It is. Which is exactly what I'm thinking though, is exactly like what you're talking about. It's simply as as a VoIP. We have a handset that's hooked up to our network. So they give you the thing that looks like a phone so that you're comfortable with it. You're like, oh, I know this thing and I know how, I know how this thing works. But, but what you're describing is the same thing. Yeah, that's all simply. It's a yeah. handset or a headset yeah. that gets plugged in the computer. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It's, it's interesting how, like I said, technology has a way of making half steps to get you comfortable oh, using it. Oh my goodness, that's like when growing up, Dad's like, "Well, you get a new phone a day, they're going to come out with a new one in, in eight months." Yeah. You know, it's like I wish, I really wish they had a full, full system for fencing industry. We were talking about that earlier. Yeah. That it seems like it seems like there's five or six different softwares that we all that use. all are good at one thing, mm-hmm. right? But we use five or six of them and kind of Frankenstein them together mm-hmm. because they're really good at this, but they're not great at the other. Mm-hmm. They're great at proposals, yep. but they're not great as a CRM, or they don't it's generate tough. pick lists cleanly, or they don't. You know what I mean? And so and so then we get this other software. But n- neither of these softwares have a really good photo capability, right. right? Like some of them do it, but not like this photo software does. So we're yeah. going to use that. And, yeah. So we've got, oh, you got Job Nimbus coming on with Simply at Company Cam. Company Cam, yep. Um, which ones am I forgetting? Well, so I'll, I'll kind of walk you through ours. So it starts yeah. at My Salesman, right? Yep. Then into Job Nimbus. Yep. Now, some guys, I think Dan is has a step between there where they'll they'll use like ArcSight for the proposals. So they're talking about getting that going, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because one thing Job Nimbus doesn't do well is have a really slick proposal. It, yeah, it's yeah. very basic. Yep. It I mean it gets a job done. Don't get me and we use it. What do you use now though? We use Job Nimbus for the proposals. What about the drawings? We have to attach them we we'll hand draw. Uh-huh. Or we'll use the Secretary of State's website where we can use a map draw tool okay. similar to Google Earth. We'll attach that to it. But We're it's... currently using the natural forms that's partnered okay. with Job Nimbus. Okay. Tons of problems, though. Yeah. I mean, like, we've, we've really had a lot of problems. It would be nice to have a really clean system. And I think that's where... It works I'll... for us right now. Well, yeah, and, but it's and... not, like, as quick as ArcSight. Right. So that's the thing. But then when you, when you look at... So ArcSight will be in the middle, but Job Nimbus does the back end really well, right? Yeah. Like oh, you can yeah. job cost at the click of a button. Mm-hmm. You can pull 
from one from the proposal, the reason we do our proposals in there is then you can pull your pick list for your guys. You can pull your uh, your gross profit report. You can pull every. You can invoice directly from it by just a drop down menu. Select which one you want to generate mm -hmm. and it generates it immediately. Yeah. And you know the pick list matches your proposal. It has to. There's no way it can't. Yeah. So th the back end is really slick. Mm -hmm. Now they have a photo system you can take pictures with the job nimbus app but they just it's not new, like they, they just updated the new app i don't know if you saw they, they, i haven't yeah. i have I, I don't know we haven't it used takes the app. it takes photos and stuff but does we'll it see. well you can see, draw on them so you could so it sounds like but it's how do you like but how, how do you share those with say say you're running subs yeah you know right like how do you share with or like on the pressure washing side or yeah or cleaning and sealing like how do you share those with you know, or your guys. How do you share those pictures with your guys? Well, that's the thing is company cam is great at pictures. And the thing we like a lot about it is got the automatic filter where you can do, it helps you line up the before and after shot. Yeah, It'll ghost image the before, you match it up with whatever you're seeing in the view and, and you got your after that matches right, exactly. You're going to have to show me that. I will. After we get done <laughs> with this, I'll show you because that is, that feature is why we use company cam. Oh, and wow. it's super easy to share it out, but. Yeah. It does you know, location, time. Which is a exactly. huge thing if you come up with a problem. Uh huh. You know, so yep. date and time stamp, the whole thing. And like you said, it does geolocation. So when our guys open it up, it says, Are you at this location? I am. There's yeah. no mixing it up. No. So we, and so in company cam, we'll do the pre job walkthrough in a video in company cam. Mm -hmm. So the guys can open it up and they can watch the video that Sarah shot with the client. Yep. So that it's like they're a part of that walkthrough too. And then we use QuickBooks the on the back on the back use, back end to do QuickBooks the accounting the back, and the back, inventory back, back, back. and that sort of thing. Yeah. Right. So we'll use all of these softwares that are great at their specific thing, and through integrations and this and that, we'll kind of Frankenstein them together. Um, and and there are companies out there trying to get the whole thing right, or and or, but it always feels like they start off with this one thing and they are great at it, mm. and then they start adding on features. That aren't quite as good as, as that as, thing. The, as, the, as their competitors. Yep, that's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. But but that's kind of where we're at. Yep. You know, and maybe one day there's maybe one day there's a software out there that just figures it all out, which would be fantastic. There will be one day, hopefully. <laughs> it, it would be so great. I hope so. I mean, at, at uh, Finstech, there were two or three there that were that were talking about it. So right. I know uh, we'll what's see. her name up at uh, CFS, uh, Julie. Mm -hmm. Yep, Julie's working on. A big one. Yeah, they've, they've got a cloud software. And... Mm -hmm. Or, uh, yeah, because I think it's, well, I, I forget what it's called, but it's something.cloud. You know, cloud-based software. Right. Uh, that would be nice. Absolutely. Uh, so there's companies out there that are trying to figure it out. Absolutely. But I think, because I think that's where everyone understands that that's where this industry is headed, yeah. is you can have increased efficiencies, which equal increased profits, by taking some of the, the mundane tasks off your plate, automating it yeah. and making it look really nice oh yeah right? like that's can i take pictures with my phone without company cam yeah but that before and after thing makes it look so nice it's, it's, it, for us it's not even that it's when they go out there when you know salesman goes out there to quote it and then they're you know drawing on the pictures about mm -hmm. you know watch out for this or you know this needs to go here just showing all that stuff yeah. and then the the uh you know crews can see that it's huge. Well, huge. when the crew takes a picture, it's shared out with everyone with access real time too. Yeah, and the, and if you have it pulled up, it updates on the main homepage mm -hmm. what's going on in current time. Yeah, which is so really we could cool. have it pulled up on the computer, talking on a cell phone with the crew, snaps a picture, uploads it. Like you said, it real time, bing, there's a picture yeah. or the video or whatever. Now, all of a sudden, it takes some misunderstandings out a lot too. Yeah, and my, my assistant just sits there and she'll find the best pictures drop them into our uh, our website designers yep. um you know shared file yep geolocates them and then we can make facebook posts so that that was when we figured out how to do that that was absolutely amazing because in the other softwares you'd have to go into each job file download mm -hmm. them and then upload them where now we'll use tags in company cam we'll just tag all the really good wood ones or the really good iron or whatever right. and so then if we're looking for a social post where we'd like a black coated chain link, mm -hmm. click the tags and now you've got all of the black coated chain link pictures. Right. 
but and it's it's funny when you when you it takes a lot of the confusion out immediately where my head went to is how many times in the past when you're on the phone you're like no it's on the left side of the house Okay, well, left from the road or left from the backyard? It left right. side, is it the north side of the house? I don't know. Yeah. Am I facing east right now? Am I now facing the house or am I facing the road? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's but, what I always have to lead with. If you're facing the house. Yeah, go standing at the road <laughs> and look at the house, and yeah. now it's on the left. Yes. Well, sharing these videos and pictures real time takes that out of it completely. Yeah. Yeah. So Our biggest fear from other people telling us was, you know, a crew showing up and tearing down the wrong fence <laughs> so like yeah. the first picture that salesmen take is picture of the, the house post. with the mailbox and the number in it i like that a lot yeah it so, takes that so guesswork right out of I it i mean you know where you're at you know we there was there was a roofing crew in town that did that exact thing Oof. they took the roof off an entire house they showed up after the homeowner left for work they peeled the entire roof off the house <sighs> the homeowner gets home <laughs> late that evening what the heck is going on <laughs> they don't have a roof anymore. <laughs> so they got a roof for free. That's awesome. And then, um, so there's a little bit more of the story. So uh, so they reported this to the police because, like, somebody took my roof. Oh, because the crew's gone. So the crew's gone. Oh, what the heck. So they called the police. <laughs> well, come to find out, some of the people. So then they're sorting through all this. Yeah. And, and so some of the people on this particular roofing crew had once and warrants. So they got rolled up mm. and all that, all because they showed up at the wrong house. And it was like, it was the wrong 100 blocks. So say it was like 1234, well, they went to 1334. Mm -hmm. So they're like, oh, I thought it was, nope. Mm -hmm. And you caused a world of hurt for a lot of people. So now these people get a brand new roof. And the people that house that they were supposed to be at has, has to get the roof. Yeah, they're upset because they <laughs> thought the crew was supposed to be out today. You know, so yes, I like that a lot. It will picture of the house with the mailbox with the numbers. Yeah, yeah, just <laughs> oversimplify everything. So say the house you're looking at right now, does mm -hmm. it match that picture exactly? Pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, right. Yeah, well, no. wait, I'm looking for a white house. <laughs> this is a brown house. Yeah. Well, you're not at the right you're house. You're not at the right house. Yeah, like, no. What what advice would you give someone? So, you know, like two years ago, like what advice would you give yourself two years ago based on what you've been through so far and where you think you're going? <sighs> to do differently or to do the same? Uh, yes. Honestly, I'd probably do it all the same. Okay. Uh, one advice, piece of advice is... Uh, I think a lot of people starting out, it doesn't matter what you're in uh, on service-based businesses, get hung up on like a certain project or, you know, okay. I'm going to lose money on this job. You know, something goes south yeah. Um, or, you know, you, you bid it wrong. You bid it, you know, just suck it up, eat the money, <laughs> keep rolling. Yeah. You know, if, uh, we, we had the job marked, this one job marked out. We, we poked a hole with the 85. Um, and all we pulled out, we pulled out a wire, but four foot long. Oh, no. Well, we were like, you know, power still working inside. Uh, what, what, what could, you know, it must just been a, you know, a piece of throwaway. They, they, yeah. they just buried. Yeah. Week later, we get a phone call. Uh, all my lights are like not working. Uh, my garage door won't open. My dishwasher is not working. I called my electrician. He showed up about two minutes after I did. Uh, kind of find out we had just pulled the common out. You got a positive, negative, oh. and common. We pulled the common out, burn all the light bulbs up, fried the motherboard on the dishwasher, and fried the motherboard on the on the uh, garage door motor. Sheesh. Make it right. Yeah, right. You know, we, uh, you know, just make it right. Pay for what needs to. I say, go pick you out a dishwasher. Go pick you out a garage door motor. Have yeah. Home Depot Lowe's install it. Send me the bill. Eat the money. Keep yeah. rolling. Suck it up go well I, I like that you're gonna point. run into problems you will you can't get hung up on them and you got to think how much is this going to cost me in the long run too mm -hmm. right so someone else in that situation may have said well you got to get the exact dishwasher you know even if it's you know you got to get the exact this exact that or nickel and dime right like you can't go get the nicest one you can't do this now that customer's ticked at you mm -hmm. right because like listen i don't want to have to go get a dishwasher right now either yeah. but so you might have paid a little more up front. I know. I, I know they picked out the probably the best dishwasher and the sure. best garage door motor. Sure. But guess what? They're happy. Yeah. You know, and I didn't have to go 
I didn't have to go buy it. I didn't right. have to go install it. I didn't have to go do any of that. Yep. But I told her I want the old dishwasher. Okay. Because I bought a new, uh, my grandmother's got plenty of rentals. Yeah, right. And I, and I just ordered the the motherboard, switched the motherboard out on it, and it's already in the house. You know, like. <laughs> nice. Um, so you recouped a little bit of that cost? I mean, I, I helped grandmother out. You know, sure. I, I, sure. I, I try to help as many. Well, now that people. client, if asked about their experience is, with is fence gonna guys, reckon, yeah. is going to say, hey, listen. They messed up, yep. but they made it right. And not only did they make it right, they didn't nickel and dime. They didn't run me through the yep. ringer. You know what I mean? And that's almost more valuable. Uh, it's a, also a good story because a uh, lady's a realtor, really nice lady, but I think the job's like 7,900 and some change. And she wanted to get the job for 7,000 flat. And from the beginning I said, no, these are our numbers. We run margins. That's the price, mm -hmm. you know, and she, all right, well, let me, and it called back, you know, about an hour later. All right, let's do it. Yeah. So, so had I, you know, sold myself short and said, all right, right. let's ca let's call right. it 7K, you know, cash is what she was wanting to pay. Of course. Hey, you know, we don't do, you know. Right. Done everything we still got to report it one way or the other. Yeah. yeah. So um, I'd have really been out some money. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, I probably, well, you said she's a realtor. Yeah. So, so now. You have to make it right with them. You well, know, she's it, out there, you know. How many people does she talk to? Now, realtors are a great lead source. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, again, like I say, how many people does she talk to and say, listen, these guys did it for me and they made right on it, that sort of thing? I think that's yeah. invaluable. Oh, yeah. Have good morals and ethics. Yeah. Do the right thing. If you tell a client you're going to do something, do it. I think a huge problem uh, in, in service-based businesses is telling people you're going to do something and not doing it, yeah. um, especially from the jump and telling you're going to be there for a quote. If you're not going to be able to make it, don't tell them you're going to make it there. Um, when COVID was really strong and it was us working, we did quotes on Saturdays yeah. all day. Oh, yeah. And the two of us quotes all day Saturday. But like now, we run a four-day work week. Okay. We set jobs Monday, Tuesdays. We build jobs Wednesday, th or Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so nice. if it rains... We've got Friday. If it rains yeah. two days, we've got Saturday. And we're back on schedule for the next Monday when we told other clients we're going to be there. Yeah, start them on Monday. I don't. T I can't tell you how much, how crucial that is. If you can, they don't, people, especially when they give you a deposit. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. well, you're, you know, this week. Or, <laughs> you know, they've yeah. got, you know, they've got dogs. Sure. They need, might need to go take to the pound. They've got, you know, they might want to take off. You definitely want them there the first day, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. You know, yep. just make sure we're all on the same page. That's you right. Know. Nothing's changed since the last time you were out. That's yeah. What I mean. So, like, you want them there the first day, right? So let's put them on schedule. Yep. You're, that's when you're going to be there. Yep. We get the job jobs that are on schedule done always and stay on schedule. And I don't the, know. And they know when they're gonna when you're going to be done and when they'll owe you that second half of the payment too. Yeah, we were. Yeah, we we really run a really strict schedule. Sure. There's a lot of people that don't agree with me on that. Um, they you know. Put as much fence in the ground as fast as possible. Sure, but sure, sure. We, we try to run a pretty strict schedule. Yeah, no, I I like that, and it helps you forecast better too. Yeah. If you say that we're gonna we're gonna produce X amount per week, and we've got six weeks of work, you know, hey, you know, Mister Miss Johnson, we will be there in seven weeks. Yeah. I know for a fact because we stick with our schedule. It might could we produce a little more? Maybe. Yeah. Some weeks. Yeah. But some weeks we can't, and yeah. so then and it would be. We, you couldn't give them an exact start date. Yeah, we hardly get you know more than two days of rain a week. You know, okay. I mean, yeah. if we get three, then then we're de we're working Sunday. It's sure. you know, it's just a tough week. Let's keep rolling. Making up, you for know, it. you just had three day weekend, you know. Sure. So sure. Keep, keep rolling. As long as you don't pile too much of those up, the guys are fine, huh? Yeah, no. Uh, we do close to two thousand feet a week. Nice. Three crew, nice. three crews. Um, I think this week we did eight jobs between three crews okay um it's anywhere between six and sometimes we'll have a lot of small jobs yeah because we're you know a lot of so one crew does you know they might have like four stops in a day sure which kind of sucks but you know we pay them you know so it don't matter yeah right you know? it is what it is you know i think two weeks ago we had 10 jobs in one week so is that right yeah kind of tough with that a lot more smaller ones you know oh, 30 feet or uh, all my neighbors have fences. I just needed two fronts. Sure. Like, oh. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But, but when you look at it on paper, usually the profit's a little bit better on those jobs. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Because you have to account for 
getting all the tools you're, out. Exactly. Every, oh, that's, you're still going to have your setup time. Yeah. Which is the same on any job. A, a five foot project or a 500 foot project. Uh, yep. Still going to have your travel time. You're still going to have your gas station yep. stop. You're still all of that. No stuff. matter how much you're doing. You have to build it in. Yep. So, Blake, let me ask you. So, the last question I usually ask is today, sitting here, would you say your success could be attributed to luck or to hard work or maybe a mixture of the both? I think it's a mixture. I truly think that COVID helped us out a lot with people being at home. Yeah. I mean, all of our, all of our businesses have, you know, exploded, but, um, I mean, we had the idea before COVID was, you know, mainstream where some, sure. some people in our area that started after yeah. COVID, yeah. you know, um, I think both, yeah. COVID really got us a lot of work, but I mean, I spent long nights just staying up, a lot focused on, you know, we need we need to get Google reviews. Where's yeah. you know where's everybody at when they look for a fence? We need to get Google reviews. We need to be on you know Facebook and you know those kind of things. You yeah. Know? Um, well, that's the thing is a lot of people say, well, luck is being at the right place at the right time, but hard work is what makes sure you're in the right place at the right time. Everything uh, we, we kind of changed things up the end of last year and uh, brought on some more people, got a new office space and stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, first two years was grit. I mean, grit, like, you know, I wake up early. I'm an early guy. So for, you know, four, five, four or five in the morning until, you know, eight, nine, eight o'clock, still in the shop, done, go inside, be done, you know, long day oh yeah and then we you know you you're able to hire a shop guy to to weld those metal frames sure. up you're able to you know get somebody to answer that phone call where you're before you're you know every second you're trying to get something done you're getting a phone call having to step away <laughs> and so you yeah. can't get anything done you yeah. know or you know going out and talk to those clients to get that initial you know final measurement and, and put a face to you know mm -hmm. a name that's right um that it takes time i yeah. mean that takes time literally you know, we have a guy that does it now, so, you know, he's eight to to two, that's what he's doing. So do sure. the math. I mean, that's that's time in a day. Yeah, yeah. It takes away from doing things. So. Well, then after two, like you had shared with me before, after that, then he's 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 doing the proposals, he's drawn it up. So it's not just that it's done it too, it's just the proposal portion, or the meeting, meeting portion has done it too. Yeah, it done at no. 12, and then he comes back, and he's done by two, and then oh, gotcha. can go do... Um, golf or whatever sure sure <laughs> it's, sure. it's actually my father that, okay that, okay yeah. he, he was uh working for walmart then he was uh driving big rig for probably six years five nice. years i uh, talked him into selling it about two months ago yeah i think he sold it at a good time oh yeah uh, he's liking working with us he before he worked for us he would come in the office and hang out of course because we started in a bedroom at his okay. at his house when, okay. I, when i lived with him yeah uh, now i don't so yeah yeah he likes hanging out and I think he's proud of us. Of course. Yeah. So. Of course. How could you not be? Yeah. Um, but yeah, you got to, yeah. the American dream is still hard, hard work and dedication and grit. Yeah. I mean, it's not uh, just an eight to five and you're done, gone home. I mean, that's what, that's right. That's what Blaze and I were talking about on the way here. It's like, you can't just be done after five or you don't right. want to, you don't want to show up to work you don't have to <laughs> you know like yeah right you, you have to you have to work hard sure you know? sure sure yeah you put in the work today to reap the rewards tomorrow reaping what you sow i i think a lot of people my age want instant gratification and sure. it's you might be able to find that somewhere but uh that might that's i i've never been able to find it well yeah it, it's the whole grass is greener on the other side thing you get over there you realize well, okay, so maybe there is some instant gratification, but it comes with a lot of strings attached. I know a lot of people that I went either went to college or high school with that, you know, have either started a side business or whatever, and then, you know, after a year, they stop. Yeah. Where if they would have just gone maybe another two years, their name would have actually got out there, and they might be, you know, only doing that. Sure. Instead of as just a side gig, where, yep. you know, they would have just been dedicated for another year or two more. And then they'll always wonder what would have been. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. I agree. Well, Blake, thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate you sharing your story with us, coming by Thanks and for seeing having the me. place. Absolutely. Yeah, nice place here. 
If, uh, if people want to get a hold of you, Blake, how do they get in touch with you? Uh, shoot me a text or phone call, honestly, <laughs> is the best way. You got um, it. Or shoot me a message on Facebook. Anybody, okay. anybody can come up and see our shop. It's not there much. Uh, we call it a shop. Uh, yeah. Mostly a lean-to. That's all right. That's all right. Uh, we actually just set up a new welding shop, nice. which is huge. Nice. Um, for us, we were just welding underneath a lean-to on gravel. Yeah. You know, it worked for us of for course. the time being, but now it's it's nice to have something flat on concrete mm -hmm. um, out of the elements. Yeah. Um, yeah. Be great. Yeah. Uh, Rogers, Arkansas. Out of Rogers, Arkansas. Uh, North of Arkansas. Uh, What's up? Uh, the Razorbacks. What's a website people can find, John? Fenceguys.com. Fenceguys.com. I got. I had to buy that one. <laughs> <laughs> Very I good. Had to come out of pocket for that, but yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Facebook uh, number four seven nine seven two one nine six four zero. There you Give go. Give me a phone call. And, and you're out there on social. People can find you. Only on Facebook. That's, what, <laughs> that's all I've got. I'm not. I can't keep up with Joe. <laughs> that's, well, it's a full time job for sure. <laughs> yeah. Guys, if you've got questions or comments, drop them in the comments below. Uh, we always love hearing from you guys and interacting with you guys. Uh, until next time, I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors.